record it. Is it just me? Hi, Bremi. Good morning. Yep, it's morning, all right. You said it's going all right? Doing all right. Yep, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Doing all right. All right, I've marked you in for attendance today. You're my first person. <laughs> Uh, I, I see, that's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll just make some tea. Uh, let's see. I have a question that's not related to this class. Okay. So for when you did look at it, I, I did do like what I did turn in the right way, correct? Um, the theory exam assignment? Yes. Yeah, but you didn't finish it. Okay. Last line. I think one in the last line. I'd look over. I'd look it over too. No, I I just didn't finish like the last like six. Because there's like, I only looked at one. I mean, I noticed one of them that looked weird, and it was wrong. I it was like an E major or maybe it was an E minor. So you should look at it. It's a triad, I think. Oh. E minor uh, I six four. I don't, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, one six four. Remember those notes line straight up in triads. In seventh chords, they're straight up and down three of the notes, and one of the notes is off to the side. They're still touching. The only reason I was looking mm -hmm. three notes and one note was off to the side. Oh okay. All right, I got Mr. Hubbard. What is it? Hello. Hello, Mr. Hubbard. I got you in, in my attendance thing. Good morning. Mr. Hubbard, did you work out what your uh, what we talked about at the end of the last class? Yes, sir. Good. I'm going to wait mm -hmm. uh, two more minutes or one more minute. I'm going to start class. Sounds like a plan. Piano too loud? No, sir. Is the music too loud? Perhaps a tad. Okay. Uh, 
how about that there? Was that okay? Better? Yeah, that was better. And you can hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I hear you. That was not too loud. Not that I'm going to play it, but just in case. All right, good. Uh, let's see. All right, so now I got uh, Carl Carter. All right. Yes, sir. So I'm going to start the class right now. So anyone else that uh, um, I chose up there to use to hang out. All right, so I'm going to share a screen. And um, you should be seeing. Um, You should be seeing it says 36 on the top, chapter two. Right. All right. So this is where we left off. We actually left off like, you know, this is, we turned the page. Uh, but it's the beginning of phrase extension. Okay. So, so, so generally a favorite method to, to create an asymmetrical pure or phrase, excuse me, is to extend the phrases, um, to extend phrases heard earlier. So you've already heard the phrase and then they, they make some sort of extension. The most frequently done after the cadence, okay? Um, so the first method of it, method one, is called prolongation. Method two is, um, it's, it's right there. Yep. Of cadence and method three is the addition of the final cadence after a deceptive cadence and I call that if you know me that's really just a progression because you always have to turn around and do the final cadence when you do that type of progression so man he He moved on me. I don't know why I decided to move back the page. All right, so it's right. It just did it to me again. Did it again. This is like getting irritating. Like went to the beginning of the chapter. I don't understand that. Here we are at Frank extension, and I'm gonna hope that it doesn't do it again. It doesn't didn't do it this time. So it's right here. Okay, so again, it's really common to, when the cadence is done, to just continue to play the chord and play the chord for a measure or two to extend the phrase, and it makes it asymmetrical as opposed to symmetrical. Because remember, symmetrical are twos, fours, and eights, okay? So people, people say they're even numbers. Yes, they are, but asymmetrical is anything but two fours and eights because if you say you uneven number that's not true because you got 10 you got you know things like that so, so be aware of that all right so here's an example right here and uh this is uh, from, uh brahms's variation of the theme by haydn which is saint anthony's chorale that goes d d d d something like that i'm sorry uh but here is the end here's the cadence right here this is the end this is like the end and it's been set up because you've heard it before and then here's the prolongation of it it just keeps playing it and i'm going to start it playing and it should be right on the 
right, right where we're at. So let me get to the right page in my book. All right, it should go D da 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 D da 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 D da 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 and I'm probably not singing in the right key. So excuse me, Carl, because I know you got like wonderful pitch. Okay. Oh, so the measures five through seven is the prolongation. Five, six, and seven. Yeah, they extended the phrase from four measures, four measure phrases, um, and then this is these are variations. This is the very end of the variation, and he extends the phrase, and he does that on every one of the variations at the very end. Okay. Hmm. Uh, this is in your actually this whole. The, uh, quite a number, I think, uh, in, your, in your book. But so that, that's one way to do prolongation. Um, all right. So, so another another way to do it is 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 just do the cadence again. And I don't have this. Um, um, I don't have this exact example, just so you know. But you can see it goes five, seven, one. Okay? That's the actual cadence. And here's the prolongation five, six, one, five, six, one. All right? The five, seven, because it's in root position, is the strong cadence. And then they just continue on and they do it five, six, one, five, six, one. Now, he could have done five, seven, one, five, seven, one, five, seven, one. It's actually a ninth chord here. I'm sorry, my vision isn't very good. So I guess it's all nine. So he's doing the same thing. I apologize. It's a nine chord. Five nine one. Five nine one. Five nine one. He's just repeating the cadence. Okay, so that's another one. And that's a prolongation as well. Yes. Remember, there's three methods of that prolongation. The first one is is just prolong it at the end the, um, well okay let, let me let me let me start all over for that question okay the category are we're in as phrase extension the first one was considered a prolongation okay prolongation of the cadence chord this is the repetition of the cadence it's still making ir an ir irregular phrase mm -hmm. And the third one is the addition of a final cadence after a deceptive cadence. Let's see if I have this. As I can play. Okay, let, me, let me find the music. Oh. I have the to come in. Let me play it one more time. This is another Because here it was right here, and here is the five, seven, six instead of one. And then here's the extension where they just turn it around and, and have to finish it off. And he basically does the same thing. He's doing right here, they sang this, and then the, but instead of using a six chord, they use a one chord at the end. Okay? So let's listen to it one more time here. Three basic ways to do that. Okay. Um, 
there are other ways. So, so although an extension to the end at a fr end of phrase is the most frequent type, extensions may also be found at other points. Extensions by interpolation within a phrase is usually achieved by repetition or a sequence of some fragment or two prolongation of a tone or chord. In 217 here, okay, um, it's taken from uh, a, a movement which is a, which the normal phrase length is four measures, but they have a repetition of a two measure fragment that stretches the phrase. So here's the, here is the six measures here. And here is the original fragment. Here is the repetition of that fragment right here. Okay. Sorry. Oh, this is driving me crazy. Why is it doing that? Yeah, that, that's a pretty catchy piece, actually. The nice piece of music. Uh, anyway, so here it is right here is the repetition of this. Okay, so here, here, here is here is the ending right here, the one chord. So it's it's this. So this is a if this is a way to do it. Um, extension. Sometimes you have an extension at the beginning of the phrase, uh, but it's much less common than the interpolation of the cadence light was right there. Uh, so. Again, this is in the middle of something, and I never, I was never able to find it when in the times I was looking. But we have this right here. This is at the beginning, and then we have it again before they finish. Here's the four measure phrase. So here's this right here, the th three measure, three measures where we have this is this, this is the downbeat of that, okay, and then it changes into the phrase in, into the four measure phrase. Okay, uh, often this is called a false start. They start and then they start again, all right? It's, um, and it says it's an anticipatory device. And you'll find that uh, and, and it being, an, being anticipatory that you'll find that in other forms of music hinting by, by playing this, because you've already heard it, and playing it in some other part, hinting that we're about to arrive to back to what you've already heard. So uh, anticipatory uh, happens a lot in music. All right, so let's see, the Haydn Symphony. I actually might have the, the 104. Hmm. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I have the third. I don't have the fourth in there. But let's just take a look at it. All right. So, and you really got to kind of read read what they're saying. And it says the, the false start, and this is it right here. Ta da ta da and then it goes up and into the piece. All right. So, that's that's in the same category as extending it from the beginning. It's just kind of like a false start. Okay? So it says here, the opening uh, bars anticipate the ascending minor third, uh, but but not the rhythm, beginning of, of the phrase itself, okay? Oh, oh. Right, here, here's it right here, the beginning of the phrase. Well, not, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not completely sure which, which, which one he's talking about. The opening bars anticipate the ascending minor third, yes? Okay, here's ending minor third, and, uh, but not the rhythm. I'd be, but, but what it's doing is it's setting you up for the minor key that you're in. Okay. That, that's what he's talking about. All right, so <clears throat> motivic structure of a phrase. Hmm. Um,
All right, so, so, sorry, I'm looking through my notes. Um, motivic structural phrase, we have, we have a motive, which is the most common uh, constructural element. And these motives are usually characterized by its pitch and or a rhythmic figure. So what he's saying here is here, here is the, here is the, the motive of, of the phrase. And here it is again. And here it is again. All right. And then it continues. So the rhythm changes and it comes to a cadence. So motives are very important. Okay. A motive is a small fragment, usually shorter than a semi-phrase, which when repeated and varied, acts as a constructional element. Okay? Everybody understand what this is. Here's the motive. Here's, here's the motive, and, and, and most of this line is built on this motive, because here it is again, then here it is again to this downbeat, and then the rhythm changes. Gesture, okay? So it changes as it goes into the cadence. Yes, sir. Okay, um, let's look at another one here. All right, I'm sorry, I'm switching between windows to, to see what goes on, and that's why I paused. All right, so let, let's just take a look at this. Uh, and I think you can, I mean, it, it doesn't have it marked, but I think it's pretty obvious uh, what it is. Here it is, and here's, here is the motive, and here it is again. It just isn't going up, it's going down. Here it is, again, interpolated going up a little bit. Then we have some sort of other note right here. Um, so maybe that makes a semi-phrase. And then here we have it again. All right, just going down. The rhythmic, the rhythm is what's, what's driving it. Here it is again, here it is again, and then the cadence. Okay? So, so understanding that is, is important. And then repetition denotes the immediate an unaltered reiteration of the motive in the same part. Let me see here. All right. So mm -hmm. here, this is repetition. It's immediate, it happened, it happened again. Yes, sir. All right. It happened and it happened again. All right, we're gonna we're gonna play this beginning here. Do it again, downbeat, then the, the triplet into the quarter note. Triplet into the quarter note, or it's not it's not a triplet. I'm I'm sorry. Oh yeah, it uh. It is. Mm -hmm. Well. And they, they don't show it again because the second one is that two is the measure number. But da -da -dum is da. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Okay? So that's just a repetition. Here we go. And then. So, so then, then, then we have this right here. See that right there? Now that's not immediate. That's immediate, but it's not at the same pitch level. Okay. Yeah. All right. So repetition again donates the immediate and all the reiteration of a motive in the same part at the same pitch level. All right. Um, mm -hmm. But 
can have some sort of variation of that too. So transposition denotes the reiteration of a motive in the same part, but at a different pitch level. See it right here? Right there, mm -hmm. pitch level, different pitch level, and even at this point, it's a change of rhythm. So the second semi-phrase is a transposition. That's what it says here. Um, and, it, and it brings it to a nice situation. I'm gonna play it again, and what happens is both times. Stop it. Mozart's going to play it. Then he's going to play it again, all at a different pitch level. So listen to this. Plays it again here. And really, repetition is one of the most important things that you can take out of out of these phrases. Repeating things is, is really important, even if it's at different pitch levels, but it 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 brings the composition into something, something in focus. If it's just a bunch of notes that go all over the place with no uh, no similar rhythms, no similar pitches, it's it's really hard to understand, particularly in this period of music. Now I'm not saying in the in the late 19th century and into the 20th and in the 21st century that that you have that but you definitely have it here okay and and so we'll be discussing these types of things yes sir so here, here we go here's um here's another version of a transposition transposed it here and transposed it here all right Sometimes you get you get you get transpositions and there's two types of transpositions. Okay? Transpositions that are real and transpositions that are tonal. Okay. Real transpositions, okay? And tonal transpositions. Real transpositions are gonna have accidentals in them. Tonal transitions are probably not gonna have accidentals in them unless you're in a minor key and you need the leading tone or something like that. Um, but if that wasn't in the aisle, let me, let me, I'm going to back off that statement because that's really not true. All right. So if I look at this transposition right here, this is, uh, C to B. Now this is D to C. That's a real, or a tonal transposition because we're just staying in the key and moving it up. So we have C to B. And then we have B to C, okay? And then, and then the, the, uh, the third one, which is in measure four, we have in the rhythm change, I realize we have G to F. So when we get, we get these transpositions, they can be real or they can be tonal. So real transpositions, The exact quality of the intervals are retained. So if we had a real transposition here, you would have seen some accidentals, because instead of going, you would have heard this. And then this one you would have heard. Because they're half steps, and those would have had accidentals in them. Uh -huh. So tonal transpositions, no, they, they're they they're pretty common, okay? Um, so if you look at this, here's the motive, here's the transposition. All right, uh, D to C sharp, half step, okay? Here we got F to E, that's a half step, right? And what's the interval from um, C sharp to, to uh, F? Six. Uh, minor sixth, minor sixth, oh, uh, augmented fifth, of yeah, the fourth, a fourth, no. e, e, and F. Well, let me do it this way. 
You're right. I don't know what I was talking about. That's all right. Um, it's an F. Here is C sharp, and here is F. So it's a fourth. What kind of fourth is it, Carl? Carl, because you got a. What's that? It's a uh, major four. I mean, that is not. Uh, say it again. Do it again. For, forget what it, the paper says, okay? All right, Carl? Sir? What's the interval? That's a major third. That's right. That is a major third. Good. Thank you. All right? Uh, and I'm going to lean on you for these things because I know you're really good at it. All right? Yes, sir. Well, there's a fourth. So what kind of an interval is it? It's an augmented fourth. Hold on. Yeah. It's that's, no, that's a diminished fourth fourth does everybody understand that that that's a diminished fourth even though it sounds like a third yes sir because it's a half, it's a half step smaller than a fourth right. so it's diminished it's smaller okay then the position we got f to e I'm gonna have to move it down in the correct octave now i'm sorry f to e and then we got a What kind of interval is that, Carl? Do it again. We got. Uh, let me let me let me play this one more time. F E. I'm just trying to make sure I played it correctly. I didn't play it correctly. F E and then A. That's a fourth. Perfect fourth, right? Okay, so the E and A. What kind of a transposition is that? The E and A. a yeah. Transposition. That's a. That's a real trick. No, a tonal transposition. Tonal transposition. That's right. If it was yeah. a transposition, the exact quality of the interval would have remained the same. Now they might have been rewritten. A third or a diminished fourth instead of a perfect fourth. All right. Okay. So, um, so here we go. In the the Beethoven here sonata. Um, I marked an X in it because it's hard to understand. Um, so we have the original motive followed by repetition and a real transposition. Here we go. This is the original motive right to here. And here it is right here. All right. And 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 the easiest way to really figure that out is, is we got accidentals. Okay. All right. And once I have accidentals, see here, this is this is C, or excuse me, this is A to G. And this would be uh E to C, natural. I, I don't know why they put a natural sign in. Uh, only Probably because somewhere else in the score. Here it is right here. Here's why they put a natural sign in, because we had a C sharp right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, D to C, all right? And uh, it, 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 it's not the greatest of examples. Um Okay, let, let me start all over. Here's the motive right here. I don't know why my book does that all of a sudden. This is a, a new experience. Uh, yeah, I was trying to do some work yesterday in my book, on my computer, <laughs> iPad, and my cell phone, and it was freezing up. I'm probably doing the same thing. So here's, here's the motive. I'm sorry, and it's and not very good. And then here is the first transposition of the motive. All right. We look, we got a whole. Level. Then we got a whole. Level. Then we got a. So let's look. Here we got a whole step. A whole step. Now oh, this isn't a transposition. This is it again. Same pitch level. Here's the transposition. We got a whole step. 
a whole step because that's B flat. And uh, we don't have the half step. Well, B, yeah, B flat to me is the half step. All right. So that's what he's saying is a real transposition of it. I think, to be honest with you, it's a crappy example. Let's take a look at another one here. All right. Um, I, I think that you'll get a better idea with a sequence, um, which is what we're moving into. Um, sequence. Two or more transpositions that occur in succession. All right. It's, it's called a sequence. So I'm hoping I'm not going to jump away. Here is the first one. All right. Then here is the second one. Here's the third one. All right. You see that? Yes, sir. And then Kaden. After this, when I move around, does it go away? Nope. Okay. All right. Good. Because I got half the screen off of my screen. Do you still see the whole thing? No, sir. No. 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 You do now. Oh, now, mm -hmm. there we go. All yeah, right, better now. All right. So, this is another one that I don't, you know, it's really difficult to, to find here. Um, but, I'll go back and look at this for a second here. So, all right. All right. The sequence is you have it done once, then you have it done at pitch level another time. And then you at least have the downbeat or the first motivic gesture of the third one, all right? Uh, in this case, you have the whole thing. All right? So that's the sequence. You got to have, see, if, if it was just here and it was here, it, it, it wouldn't be uh, a sequence. It would just be a transposition. You don't understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Once you get more, you probably have a sequence. All right. So it says when uh, transpositions the session, the process is described as a sequence. Each stage of the sequential process. Um, uh, says original statement of the transposition. So it's calling it a stage. Uh, so this is stage one. This is. Uh, this is the original, this is stage one, and this is stage two. All right. Um, but I would actually, I, I, this is the original. Let me let me repeat that. This is the original. We would call that, once we figure out it's a sequence, we call it one of the sequences. Three. All right. So it says two or more transpositions occur. So first you have to have the first one then the second and the third. So you need three, all right? Uh, each stage of the sequential process may be described as a sequence. Another method to identify each statement of the most successively as stage one, stage two, and stage three, which is what I was talking about. Stage one, stage two, and stage three. All right? So these are these are pretty pretty uniform and pretty straightforward. Okay, so uh, believe it or not, we have two types of sequences. She does not. She does not really introduce here. All right, uh, I'm looking hard, and he doesn't. So we're going to end up learning about more about these sequences a little later. And we have two types. One is a tonal sequence and one is a real sequence. And let me just give you a hint. Tonal sequences go nowhere. They stay in the same key. Real sequences modulate. And it's a favorite way to do things. All right. So we go down here and we talk about imitation. Imitation refers to the immediate Reiteration of a motive in a different part with or without transposition. All right. So it's imitation. It goes into a different part. If a motive in a different voice begins several beats after the original statement is completed, the reiteration will more likely be heard as a new statement. Okay. 
uh, of the motive rather than imitation. So uh, if, the opposite, if the opposite is true, it says, if imitation uh, commences before the original statement is completed, we have this term called stretto, okay? I'm not sure I asked you about that on the homework. Um, stretto. So that's a term that we'll learn uh, much further down the line toward the end of the class when we talk about fugues, because fugues have a theme, and then they have another theme and another voice, so on and so forth. And But sometimes a theme will start before the second one or before the first one is, 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 not, is not completed, and then we, we would have straddle. But again, imitation refers to the immediate reiteration of a motive in a different part, okay? So th that, that's what makes, that's different from repetition. Repetition would be, in the same part. Mm -hmm. Understand that? So, so like imitation is when the oboe does something and then it's immediately repeated by the violin, but it would, it's repetition, the oboe does it twice. Say that again, as I was interrupting your talking. Go ahead. So it's, imi it's an imitation if like the oboe plays a motive and then it's immediately repeated by like the violin, but if the oboe played it twice, in a row, then it would be repetition. That's correct, okay? And yes. I'm gonna be honest with you, all of this last part of this chapter are tricks and tools of the trade for composing. Okay? Right. Uh, that's why these, these are really important if you wanna be a writer, to, to understand these. You don't necessarily have to use these things, but to understand your history is to be a better composer. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, although imitation is the most important uh, important contrapuntual device, uh, it's often used for good purpose in passages that are homophonic. All right. I hope I have this passage. Don't have it. Symphony number five, opus sixty-seven. I might have this. <laughs> Should be right here. Do it again. So you don't have the very beginning of this, but then you have the other parts to it. Does that does ever did everybody hear that? So like this starts in measure six. So we're gonna have the opening theme of this and and when it starts going da, 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 that's where it the, the music is. Here we go again. Now that everything went away, here we go. Here we go. And of course that's the end of it. But if we take a look at that. Take a, if we take a look at this, so this is re, uh, this is imitation, all right? So uh, this is the G, this is um, G4. This, my friends, is G4 also, okay? Because that's middle C is the middle line. Uh, that's A, I'm sorry. My... It's uh, it's at a different pitch level, or it's at some different of a pitch level, but it is repetition. Uh, excuse me, it's not repetition; it's imitation. All right. When we go back to what it said, imitation refers to the immediate reiteration of a motive in a different part, with or without transposition. All right. So this is transpose. That's an A. It's up a step, and this, of course, is an E flat. Uh, this was an A flat, I'm sorry, and this is an E flat. All right? All right? Yes. All right, so then we, we run into some terms like intervallic expansion and intervallic contraction. If you change, change uh, the, the interval a little bit. So if you shorten the intervals, you make them smaller. 
So. So intervallic expansion and contraction alter the pitch shape of a motive, but the basic contour of the rhythmic pattern is still there. So if, oh, driving me crazy. Now it's going back to the original page. Clearly, I have no idea where I'm at. Forty-three. All right. I think you passed it. Oh, I heard it answer. All right. Um, could be. It could be right in here. Go up some more. I think you passed it. All right. Here we go. There it is. All right. It's in. It's in this area right here. And it says, intervallic expansion and contraction alter the pitch shape of a motive, but the basic contour is still the same. So if, if, if my motive went way up and then, if, if my motive went way up and then down and we made them smaller, it would just go up and, and down, but not as much. Or if the original motive went like this and we made them larger, it would go like this. The contour is still there. So it would still be a wave or it'd still be an arch but it was just smaller, all right? Um, so, it says here, intervallic contraction is illustrated in 27.2. The note, the note of the descending third of the original motive is replaced with the descending sec second after the first imitation. Da, 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 da. Then here it is, instead of the third, here it is the second, do you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, so, so, so the basic contour is still there. It still goes down. All right. Uh, in twenty in, in two twenty eight uh, comes the expansion of, of something. So here's the original one, and here it is again, but it's 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 bigger. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that's really kind of how that works. So then we, we come into something called inversions. A lot of conversion donate, donates. Oh man, I'm gonna have to like throw this document out and start all over. All right. Uh, a lot of conversion donates. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to circle it again because so it just keeps going away. A lot of conversion donates. The reversal of an upward and downward motion of the motives intervals. All right. So. Ascending intervals invert to descending intervals and vice versa. Other terms used for this are called mirror contract, uh, contrary motion or simply inversion, all right? Um, melodic inversion. You could have rhythmic inversion too. Uh, as the term inversion is sometimes interpolated to mean invertible counterpoint, and but we'll talk about that much later. Um, so, and we'll use the term invertible counterpoint for the confusion, all right? So, um, so here we got the original right here. <laughs> we got the, uh, um, we got a repetition of it with the first note deleted. And then we have the melodic inversion of it, all right? So this went up, so we're starting here, it's going down. See how it goes up, 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 down. Uh, it just goes up, and it, and it's just going down here. It's really the same thing, 
Um, and I don't think it's a wonderful example, but the only thing that I could say is see how this is a second, 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 and then it falls down to start all over again. This is a second, this is a second, this is a second, this is a second. So uh, that's true, but I don't think it's a good example of it. But if you think about it, yeah, if I have a melody, can you hear that piano or is it too soft? That's good. Right. So if I have a melody that goes up, I can do it going down. That's just an inversion of it. Mm -hmm. That was a tonal inversion of it as opposed to a real inversion of it. So so that's that's really kind of what the idea of this is. You'll see a lot of that in fugues. All right. Um So here is here is the original motive right here, and here is the inverted motive, melodic inversion. Instead of going down, it goes up. All right. Again, it it, it changes the pitch shape right here, and then goes up. So you're starting to get combinations of things. All right. Um, all right. So then we have just something real simply: the addition or deletion, which is right up here. Of a motive's rhythmic character, if and 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 really the original rhythmic outline is usually still recognizable, but you you changed it. All right, so you could you could just delete out a note or or something like that, and but but the original is still kind of recognizable. That's kind of what that is. That's kind of common. All right. Um, it says in example 231, an added note occurs in the fourth statement of the motive. All right, here's motive one. Here's a transposition. Here's an interval expansion of it. And then here is some added notes to get from here to here. So you hear it once, you hear it once, you hear it again, you know, the rhythm uh, really and the pitch is moving up. Now it gets bigger. And then you hear this with just some notes filling it in. So now you got those passing tones. That's all that really is. All right. Um, I'm just, I'm just look, I'm looking in my book to see if I have the pieces of music. I, I don't ever have all of these uh, because they're just too hard to find. Because these are like right in the middle, or sometimes, even though they say one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, for all I know, it's it's not good. Or I've crossed it out. I actually have an X on it because it's not very easily to, easy to hear. All right, so here's the motive. Here's the motive again with some added notes in it. Here's the motive again with more added notes and so on. So you hear the motive and you hear it in this case, slowly increase in size. So we're adding. And so the music is, as his term, he likes to say unfolding. He says it somewhere here, unfolding in time. Motive gets bigger, gets bigger, gets in. And then we have this very long one, all right? Um, I am, for some reason, I think I have this. I'm just curious what this is. Here we go. <laughs> Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was stupid fast. I yeah. Yeah. Play that again. Play that again. <laughs> oh, we can play it a hundred times and then you can't see it. But I'm going to play it one more time, okay? All right. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> you think i mean i i hear it, 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 it that's i see it yeah mm -hmm. no. and, and that that was the beginning actually um so um we have we have we have some more of this and since i have the brahms up somewhere uh 
we have Rob's. Uh, let's see, two thirty-three. Comparison, a comparison of the bracketed motives in A and B in example two thirty-three reveal the deletion of the tones in the motive. All right, so uh, I'm not going to really play this. Um, I'm going to play the beginning of it so you recognize the song, the piece of music. All right, because I know you most likely have heard this before. This is this right here. Have you heard that before? Yeah, I've played that before. Mm -hmm. Um. No. No. It's a really popular song. No. Probably heard it in 300 movies. Not that I watch movies, but I'm just I'm just pointing out that I I I've heard it in movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Watch BBC television. Yes. Not really. Because, uh, um. They're they're big into that stuff. Let's see. I'm actually gonna probably play this and watch through it. So I'm gonna measure six through ten. All right, it's the second phrase of the uh melody, and then I'm looking for measures thirty-five through thirty-nine. Oh, that's not a variation. Uh, well, we're just going to play this and listen to this right here, and then we'll look at what, what happened here. All right, here we go. I hope. <laughs> Look at it. it. Starts right here now. Okay. So that was that right there. And I realize that's it's, it's broken down in something. Um, you do find piano versions of this, but it's the orchestrated version people uh, hear, listen to. So here it is right here. Um, how they've reinterpolated this. They took the downbeat, the downbeat, the downbeat, the downbeat, made this a half note. And then this folding down one just, just changes a little bit in character. Um, so what he says is, uh, um, this is, this is like subtract, uh, subtraction of the rhythm, but it's, but it's still there mostly because it's already been set up for you by the time they do this. All right. Um, uh, all right. I, I need to stop here. Um, Pretty much at the end. Hang on a second. Vision deleting. All right. A retrograde. You know what a retrograde is? When is it? astrology, yes. Yeah. Refers to the occurrence of motive notes in reverse order. Okay. So you might get the, the, the motive in reverse order. You might even get the rhythm in reverse order. All right. But here's the original, and here is the retrograde as an example. So that's retrograde original and here's another retrograde and then we have something else called a retrograde inversion so we have a retrograde and we've inverted the notes here's the original here is the retrograde inversion um so just take a look at this i need to go and, and look at the assignment that we're gonna do here um, okay so 
last time I looked, we only had, which was about five or 10 minutes before class, I only had about three people turn in the assignment. Anybody who did turn in the assignment by 9.30 is going to get a large percentage taken off because you have a very, very distinct advantage. However, if there's some sort of problem, we don't want to talk about it in here. Send me something through Canvas, you know, reply to a, an announcement or something. Just send it to me through Canvas and we can make the discussion on it, all right? I understand, okay. all right? But the, anybody who turns in stuff, now has gone has has had the opportunity to go through all of the terms pretty much all right let's be aware of that all right so here we go i got um i need to reshare a screen new share um desktop google Yeah, are we looking at Canvas now? Yeah. All right, this is the assignment right here. Uh, I, I put it in a PDF for you, but it is in your book, all right? Um, I just put it in the book. All right, so here it is. This is from... Page 259 in the book, only measures one through 18. This is opus 39, number 11 from the album from the young is Tchaikovsky, Mazurka. Um, da -da -da, da -da -da, dee -dee -dee, dee -dee -dee. All right, so it's one through 18, 16, 17, 18. It doesn't include these last two measures. Everybody mm -hmm. understand that? Yeah. Right, let's just take a listen to this. Um, I probably, yeah. give me a chance here for a second here. Um, my channel. Get ready. Here we go. I hope. Let me just back up for a second to make sure I gave you that. If not, I'm going to have to do that for you. Um, it is important to listen to it. Okay, so it's C. Sorry about this. Uh, I just want to make sure you you have this. So I'm going to add this to it. All right, so you so you'll be able to go to that uh, that piece of music. I also believe it is in your chapter two um, music. Uh, no, I don't think it is. All right, so good. I'm glad I caught myself there. So there it is right there. Um, and so now we're going to go back to look at the questions. So I'm going back to the PDF. Oh, I just downloaded it. So there's two parts to this, all right? On the score, you need to identify the harmonic cadences. 
All right. So here's the cadence. You need to classify it. So you just say harmonic cadence. Is it final or is it non-final? So like harmonic cadence. You could just write cadence. All right. I would know that it's a harmonic cadence. And then you need to classify it. So you could say cadence final or cadence non-final. Final cadence is end on one. Are you talking to me? Final cadence end on one. Could everybody see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Final cadence is end on one. Non-final don't. All right. Then you need to on the score identify your cadences as rhythmically strong or rhythmically weak. Now, what is that? You got to have something to compare it to sometimes. But man, if the thing just stops on one, that's pretty strong compared to just stopping on three as an example. There is more to it than that. Identify the main motive and fray of the, of the phrase on your score. The motive. Not the whole phrase. The motive. So, there are multiple motives you want us to like circle each I different the main motive. Just the main motive. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's probably pretty obvious. Yes, uh, sir. How many phrases does the excerpt contain? Okay. Now, some of us are gonna have a different opinion than others. Right. And 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 there's a strong possibility I can see your your opinion of it. I might not agree with it, but if you can, if we can it up, it. back it up, because remember, phrases have cadences. If you don't have a cadence, you don't have a phrase, right? Right. Okay. How long is each phrase in terms of number of measures? Are the phrases regular or irregular? <laughs> Sorry. Phrase Extension. Our uh -huh. semi phrase construction. Okay. Uh, you might have two two main motives if you really kind of look at that. You might say, oh, well, here I got the first part of the phrase, and here's the, maybe the second part of the phrase. So you might have that. Uh, uh, do any factors other than poor chord progression? How do factors other than chord progressions contribute to A, a sense of the cadence? So you gotta look at the music and listen to it and give me something, something there, all right? And cool. again, and how about the musical coherence of the excerpt? You know, how do you make things cohesive? Uh, repetitions of rhythms, uh, parts that repeat, things like that. You wanna point those things out. Put some measure numbers in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying point every one of them out, but but point a couple of them out. You you know what I'm saying? All right. So, so typing how in. How do you want to mark the score again? You just want to. Well, you need you need to actually mark the score, and almost every reader that we that we have uh, will allow you to do that. Um, Except if you're opening it in, in Chrome or something like that. Like like the reader that I was using for all the other music that I can mark things in there, I can put a text box in and type, all right? Most readers, you can do it. Just look it up on the internet on how to do it. If I'm using this, just look up type into a PDF, all right? You could type this whole thing if you wanted to, but I just need you to mark the score. or print the score and mark the score with your pen, your pencil. Don't, mm -hmm. don't use a pen. Because don't you can mark something with a pen and then have to cross it out. And if it's on the score, it messes it all up. Pencil, all right? Yes, sir. All right, this is due Tuesday. Okay. Dude. Tuesday. All right. Okay. I want to get ahead. We are moving to Chicago City. Okay, now, anyone who is here, who is here, that was not here when I took attendance, uh, which I took attendance and uh, Carter was here, Remy was here, and Hubbard was here. Anyone else needs to stay so I can get attendance. And if you got some questions, you can stay and I'll take those.
sure the attendance, okay? All right, man. Okay. So other people. So, Hubbard, I already had you. Samuel Neal. All right, let's see. Samuel Neal, I got you for attendance. Thank you. All right. I got you for attendance. Thank you. All right. <laughs>